Yo, where the fuck am I? I think I'm in a Walmart. Christ, this is a fate worse than death. I need postal. I need postal. I need more postal content. Is this postal? Is this postal? Fuck, no postal Barbie. Is this postal? Is this postal? Oh, hey man, I got a question. Uh, do you know where I can find postal at? Like, the game? Is that postal? Mm -hmm. Like, the game? Oh, okay. Nah, it's not possible, but thanks for the help, man. Yeah, if it's, if it's, if it's not over here, ask, uh, go to, uh, electronics, because it might be, okay. Holy shit, there's, there's no, there's nothing here. Oh shit, dude, that's an AK-47 rifle. Man, fuck Walmart, that place sucks. You know, it just dawned on me that I was in civilization for a second, and I probably could have asked for help. Well, whatever, I need to go find some postal content. Wait. What the hell is this? Ooh, 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 ooh postal content. Ooh, ooh, ooh special delivery. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I, I don't know what that says. Well, I might as well be mine, mine now. Oh shit! Yeah, I need light. But sauce. <laughs> hey everyone, elephants doing crack back again. After the controversial release of Running With Scissors' first video game, Postal, quite a bit happened afterward. Postal was either banned or censored, and news and new content were added to the game. I never mentioned some of these in my Postal video due to not having enough time and wanting to save the information for another day, which is where this video comes in. But definitely make sure to watch my first Postal video if you haven't already. There is a multiplayer and challenge mode for Postal. It's pretty basic stuff and not too special, but I didn't mention them because A, I have no friends that are willing to play with me on Postal 1, and B, I never played much of the challenges or cared too much personally. If you like these modes, then that is totally cool. I just wasn't grabbed by them. Around December 1997, Running With Scissors released a Christmas patch giving Postal a Christmas makeover. It changed the grenades into Santa Claus, throwable items into Christmas presents, ostriches into reindeers, and even added new Postal Dude voice lines. On the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me weaponry. Deck the halls with blood and holly. Where's the fat man? Too much mistletoe. Merry Christmas. I'm the Grinch, and I'm here to steal Christmas. Rick Hunter apparently doesn't remember recording these lines. This was an abnormal patch that came out of nowhere, turning a dark and edgy game into a more comedic experience. It's nothing too crazy, just a free patch that the devs made. I also forgot to mention how Santa in this patch doesn't shut the f*** up. Let me introduce you to Blitz. There were a couple of obscured versions that censored Postal, like the version Postal Going Over the Edge in Germany and the Netherlands, where features were outright cut or just removed from the game. Some of them include the executions not being a mechanic, the parade on the fourth level being gone, kinda lacking in the parade of disasters but okay, and the elementary school shooting not being present but jumping to the asylum. Minus the ending, I don't even know why they bothered censoring some of this stuff. It's not like it saved young Jimmy from seeing horrible things, this is still a violent game. An interesting fact about Postal going over the edge was that it was published by Take-Two Interactive. Yes, that Take-Two Interactive. Again, this is like forgotten and lost media. Some of these versions are just not common anymore and have just been lost to time. You can still download it and Running With Scissors did release a patch on their website that would fix all these issues for Europeans. But it's odd, there isn't much info on some of these ports. Jumping far ahead, Running With Scissors announced to their fans on Twitter on August 17th, 2015, that if someone promised to port Postal 1 on the Dreamcast, they would release the source code for the game. And what do you know, someone actually ported the game onto the Dreamcast. It's not just something slapped together, they actually did a good job porting it over. There are button prompts, and auto-aim, and up to four players can play? That is pretty cool. There was also a mistake in my Postal video where I mentioned how once you get hit by a rocket, you can't avoid it. Like, once you get hit by a rocket, you are basically screwed. This isn't true. You can crouch in the game and it will dodge the rockets. I always forgot this was a mechanic in the game and no one corrected me, so... There you go. 
But now, on to the real meat and potatoes of this video, the reason you are here. Like most successful PC games around the 90s and 2000s, it usually meant expansion pack time. Postal would get one single expansion called Postal Special Delivery. Out of all the games and expansions in the Postal series, this one just doesn't get discussed or mentioned much. It was released one year after the base game on August 28, 1998, and developed again by Running With Scissors. As for new content, it adds in new civilian skins, an improved netcode, a retweaked deathmatch, and online co-op. Special Delivery doesn't add anything new to gameplay or mechanics, it's more or less just a level pack if you crave more postals. It also might beg the question of whether this expansion is canon to the base game or not. There isn't much of a story or plot, we only get one strange and ambiguous war journal on the back of the box. I woke up from the strangest dream this morning. My head is pounding. Who came in here and moved all of my furniture? I'd better find out. Watch for falling prices, falling employees, falling customers, incoming missiles, and blood puddles. So, are you just gonna buy something or just stand there? Oh, sorry. Um, you wouldn't happen to by any chance have the hit selling video game Postal, would you? No. No, we don't. We banned it recently. What? You don't sell Postal? The first level of this expansion pack starts out strong with Easy Mart. This was Running With Scissors' attempt to not get Walmart for banning their game. There are Running With Scissors cross-out signs, phones going off, relaxing music playing on the speaker, and guns being sold casually like it's nothing. Okay, it's not that bad in the US. Oh wait, it is. Huh, that's kinda like Postal. Crazy how that small little joke in the background is still kind of relevant. I love the new funny voice lines, the fourth wall breaks, and the setting. A lot of attention to detail. It's definitely my favorite level in the expansion. The Earth is thirsty. It also seems to have soiled itself. The next level is Shantytown, my least favorite in the level pack. It feels like a normal and basic map. You could throw this anywhere near the beginning of Postal and I wouldn't have noticed a difference. It's not exactly bad. For what it is, I still think it is fun shooting homeless people. The Earth is hungry, so it ate some people. By the time you reach the third level, it becomes apparent that Running With Scissors really wanted to showcase what they could pull off with the engine. It stands out as one of the most visually impressive levels in the game. The attention to detail is admirable, from scattered debris and broken glass to an ambulance siring off and wrecked vehicles scattered about. Oh, maniacs, you blew it off. Oh wait, that was me. There was also some random guy in one of these buildings. Granted, by 1998 there were plenty of other games with more advanced graphics. But this is a significant improvement for Postal 1's base levels. Speaking of which, I found myself wanting to explore these levels just to see what I missed. At times, walking around in Postal alone can have a very liminal space feeling to it. Maybe that's just me. Overall, Earthquake definitely stands out as one of the highlight levels in Special Delivery. Did someone say they've fallen and can't get up? I've fallen and I can't get up! Can't get up! You should have gone to Disneyland. So I guess the Postal dude drove here in John Carmack's Ferrari and went Postal on quote, Rich Bastards. Rich Bastards. This is the 1998 Above the Law Convention for Lawyers. I can only imagine that this takes place on Jeffrey Epstein's island. I like this level a lot too, it pretty much gives you every item. You get to kill naked lawyers, kill elderly people, go on a golf course, and just steal their flag for the hell of it. Just like the previous levels, there are unique sound effects that play and a lot of polish. I didn't even notice this golf club and balls on the roof until post-production. This level probably contains one of the most random lines I've ever heard in an expansion pack. <laughs> 
thinking about it now, this is a very close second place for me between the first level. Both are really good, but I gotta love this tropical music. And that's it. Oh, sorry, did you think there was more? Nah, nah, that, that, that's it. $25! That is the only problem with this expansion. It is too damn short. My playthrough of Special Delivery took me only 23 minutes and 30 seconds. Most of that time was spent going through the levels and looking at the environment. So you could beat this expansion in probably under 20 minutes. All the levels were excellent. I just wanted more levels and content. One of the things I really like about this expansion pack is that it is hilarious. It's almost like Postal 2's humor, but in Postal 1. I guess Running With Scissors decided to diss that whole grim aspect of Postal after the game's release. I can understand why. Postal Special Delivery is pretty disappointing, and for just 4 levels, it was not worth the asking price in my opinion. But an add-on to Postal that is even more odd and forgotten is Super Postal. Super Postal is so short that I can't even make this its own video. There is even less content than Special Delivery with only 2 new levels. This isn't exactly an expansion pack, rather this is a Japanese port of Postal with extra content. Heck, Super Postal isn't even the original title of this port. Rumor has it that Super Postal was just a term made up by someone in the west to not cause confusion which caused confusion. We'll probably never know why it's called Super Postal or the person who started it. The real title is Postel Bra Aptikito, which means Postal Power Up Kit. There was also a version called Postal Premium Pack, but that was just a bundle, nothing else to it. Let's just try to stay focused. This is definitely a strange port of the game with little information known about it. It was released on March 17th, 2000, two years and five months after the initial release. It was published by Micromouse, a limited company that helped port Western games for Japanese audiences. Some games they helped publish for Japan were Bolo and Star Wars Dark Forces. Micromouse presumably went out of business around the early or mid 2000s. Only a little is documented and easy to access info about this company isn't out there, they just went off the grid completely. In-game changes for this port include a full Japanese dub, <laughs> Postal Dude wore a green trench coat by default, supposedly, and the ending uses a different music track. This Japanese dub is fucking hilarious. The postal dude sounds more like Dio than his calm and psychopathic sounding voice. It's a very different way to re-experience Postal. It just feels... weird. But what about the new exclusive levels? So the Postal dude goes from the state of John McCain, then travels across the Pacific Ocean to Anime Land. How did he get here? I don't know. There isn't a story reason or a war journal to explain why. Hell, even in Redux they don't give much of an explanation. The Postal Dude must have really lost his fucking mind. Watch the river run, flowing with bubbling blood. The end. It is near. Earlier, I mentioned how Super Postal has less content than Special Delivery, yet it took me 57 minutes and 51 seconds to beat these two levels. How the fuck? These two levels are tricky. I'm kind of surprised by this difficulty spike. When I replayed them again and knew the levels, it took me around 24 minutes and 53 seconds. Now maybe this is just a skill issue on my part, but damn they didn't hold back. I kept dying over and over and over and over again. Okay, that last one was on me. 
All the civilians are Japanese themed, with schoolgirls and the NPC speaking Japanese. Do you speak Japanese? No. <laughs> These new NPCs always speak Japanese no matter what language you have selected. So that means they have that funny voice acting. <laughs> As you would guess from the title, the postal dude is going postal in Tokyo. Like special delivery, these levels are well detailed in design. There are different routes you can take, a lot of enemies, Japanese advertisements, and questionable English signs. Like Cyberhole, a knockoff Sega called Gessa, and damn. It's just damn. One easter egg is this destroyed building that hints Godzilla did it. You can see his print and hear him in the distance. I actually met Godzilla so I can confirm this. That is super neat. For Super Postal. Come on guys, I tried. The footprint you see, Godzilla has formed for you. Your city laid waste. What are you talking about? Godzilla was on the previous level. The postal dude, I guess, teleported from Tokyo to Osaka. It's not a bad level, but it's not as good as Tokyo in my opinion. It could be more detailed and there are fewer cool things to highlight. I do like how there are three different bridges you can go on. Compared to Postal's grim and dirty areas, I find these colorful environments so refreshing. It gives Postal 1 a different tone, similar to how Special Delivery did it. Postal Dude still says proudly made in the USA, baby, even though we are in Japan. Proudly made in the USA, baby. To conclude, are these two maps difficult? Well, yes and no. One of the problems is that these levels are huge. Postal 1's levels were usually quick and short, you wouldn't be there for that long. For Super Postal, the levels may look nice, but once you die, you have to do all of that over again. There are also a lot of enemies, so when you run out of ammo for a particular weapon, you might need to be careful and hope you are lucky. And for some reason, enemies are falling out of the sky in this level. Like Special Delivery, my only critique is that there needs to be more new content. I just want more levels. Plus, this port came out in 2000. Not only was this exclusive in Japan, with most Westerners not being able to play it, but most people were flopping to new games. It just came out too late in Postal's release. So yeah, those are the Postal 1 add-ons. As I mentioned, my only problem is that I just wanted more levels. What's here is excellent and it's a little bit of a letdown. You can find both Special Delivery and Super Postal in any version of Postal for free nowadays, so it's not like you are losing any cash by playing them. They were also remade in Postal Redux, so that is something. Here's your low price guarantee. But since we are officially done with Postal 1, the next Postal video will be on Postal 2. Whenever that will be or when I feel like it. I'm, I'm bad at promises, guys. You should know that by now. I hope you enjoyed the video. Consider subscribing to the channel and commenting on your thoughts below. It was awesome doing a poll on what you guys wanted Postal Dude's coat color to be for this video. I really love doing that kind of thing with fans just to see what they want more. Until next time. I regret nothing. Yeah, that's still kind of edgy and fucked up. What? You don't sell Postal? Okay, that time it was pretty funny.